Hey there, welcome back to Charger Games. My name is Raja and in this video, you're gonna learn how to make a simple Android game using Unity Game Engine. So before starting, let's take a look at what you're gonna be building at the end of this video. So as you can see here, we have this game and this is the first screen that you see. So as you can see, it says press any key to start. So I can press on the left and the game starts and this way I can move the paddle to the left or the right. When you touch on your Android device on the left and right, the paddle will move and the ball will bounce. And as you can see, as soon as the ball goes down, the game restarts. So this is the core function of the game and we're going to build it from scratch. So let's get started. Now, first of all, you have to give a name to your project. So in this case, let's give a name Unity android project all right and then here you need to select the location where you want to save your project in my case i always save my projects here so you can save it here or you can create uh, you can save it on any other location that you prefer then we need to select this 2d because in this case we are working on a 2d project so we're going to select 2d after that simply click on create and it will create a new project for you so in my case, I have already created a new empty project. So here it is, Unity, uh, Unity Android project. Here we have it. So when you open Unity for the very first time and your very first project loads, this is how it will look. But probably in your case, it will not look like this. Probably in your case, it will look like this. All right. But I usually like to work on a different layout. So to change the layout, you can go to this top right corner click on here and select this 2 by 3 and I like to work on this layout because uh, here I can see the scene view as well as the game view at the same time but you can use any other uh, layout that you prefer so now the first thing we have to do is we need to save the scene so file save and as you can see our scene is already saved inside the scenes folder but the name is saved as sample scene so we're gonna go ahead and rename it and we're gonna name it game all right and then reload and as you can see here we have renamed our scene to game now we're gonna go to file build settings and as you can see currently our platform is set to pc mac linux standalone but we want to build for android devices so for that we need to select this android and if you don't have the android versions installed or the android components installed while installing unity then you will not be able to do this all right so now you need to select this android and simply click on switch platform and once you click on that you will see that unity will slowly change our platform from windows to android so here as you can see the unity logo has been shifted towards android so now our current platform is set to Android and if you see on top as you can see here Android is written that means this is our current platform that we are working on. Then we need to select an aspect ratio for our game. So as you can see here free aspect is written from here we need to select this 16 is to 9 landscape or you can also select this uh, 1920 by 1080 landscape. I think I want to select this so let's keep it like this now we need to start working on our game so inside the assets folder we're gonna keep all our assets or all our project elements like sprites audios scripts and all these things here so we're gonna create different folders here to organize all these things so here I'm gonna create a new folder and I'm gonna name it sprite where we're gonna keep all our sprites or images we can also create a new folder and we're going to name it scripts where we're going to create all our scripts. All right. So now, as you can see here, we have this game uh, scene and here we have all the elements that are inside this game scene. Currently, we only have this main camera. So we can select the main camera and from here, as you can see, we have this background and the background clear facts are set to solid color so let's go ahead and change the color so select here and from here we can select any other background color that you want let's select uh, 
color like this it's your game so you can go ahead and select any other color that you want so you are free to use or um, choose any other color but i think i want to choose a color like this all right so or maybe like this so let's keep it like this we can change it later as well so whenever you make any changes make sure to press ctrl s or go to file save to save your scene all right so now we're gonna create some boundaries for our game so we're gonna go inside the sprites folder right click create a new uh, sprite so we can create a uh, create sprites and square all right so now we're gonna drag this square right here on the hierarchy and as you can see here we have our square now i can move it on the top like this so to move it on the top make sure you have this rect tool selected and then we can simply press the alt button and drag it to make it bigger like this all right and if you don't want to click on the alt button you need to do it like this manually but if you press the alt button then you can do both sides at the same time so press the alt key and click and this is how we have created the long boundary all right now let's go ahead and change its color so i'm going to change it to a color of something like this I think this one looks fine or if you want you can also go ahead and change it and give it any other color that you want then I'm gonna rename it to boundary now I can right click and click on duplicate all right now I can select this tool this move tool and move it down something like this then I can go to this transform component and from the Z rotation I'm gonna make it 90 all right then I'm gonna push it to the right side like this now before doing that I think I have missed one step so let's go ahead and select this boundary go to add component go to physics 2d and select box collider 2d all right so when we give a box collider 2d as you can see here we have a green outline outside of our boundary so now our boundary can collide with other game objects all right so if we don't give it a boundary or if we don't give it a collider then our balls will pass through it and they will not collide or bounce from the walls but we want the balls to bounce from the walls that's why we want to give it a box collider the same way we're going to select this boundary as well and we can go to add component physics 2d box collider 2d so now we need to create a boundary on the left side and this is very simple i'm going to right click click on duplicate and now as you can see we have another boundary here but this one is at the same position so all we need to do is we need to change the x position from 8.88 to negative 8.88 and as you can see as soon as you click as soon as you give a negative sign before that it just moves to left side on the opposite side so now these things are looking pretty good and all of them have a box collider attached to them so now that we have created the boundaries now we need to bring the paddle and the ball in our scene so now we're going to add the paddles and the balls to our game so here inside the sprites folder i have few sprites of the paddles that i have downloaded from the internet and you can download them from kenny.nl website or from any other website that you want and from here i can simply drag this paddle right here and as you can see here we have our paddle now as you can see it is very small so to make it bigger we can either change the scale directly from here or the better way is to select our sprite and change the pixels per unit from 50 to 100 and then click on from 100 to 50 i'm sorry and then click on apply as you can see the size has been doubled now i can simply select it and move it down like this all right 
The same way we can select our ball and drag it like this. And then we can select the ball sprite, change the pixels per unit from 100 to 50, and then click on apply. So now we have our paddle as well as our ball right here on the screen. Now we need to find ways so that we can move our ball and move our paddle, bounce our ball and do all these things that we want. And whenever you make any changes, make sure to save the scene. So I'm going to press Ctrl S to save the scene. Now I'm going to select our ball blue and I'm going to rename it to ball. Now we're going to add a physics component to our ball. Now we want our ball in the game to bounce, to bounce through the walls, to bounce from the paddle and then we want to, we want it to collide with the paddle and the boundaries. So that's why we need to add some physics mechanisms to the ball. All right. To do that in Unity, we need to simply add a component called Rigid Body 2D. So here we're going to click on Add Component, Physics 2D, and Rigid Body 2D. And where is that? So here we have the Rigid Body 2D. So as you can see, when we added this Rigid Body 2D component, it automatically has these properties like Mass, Drag, Gravity Scale, and all these things. So Unity's physics engine gives this thing to us already or by default when we add this rigid body 2d component to any game object so in this case we have added it to the ball and now if i click on play you will see that the ball will fall down and that's because it now has a gravity scale of one so the ball is now affected by physics and that's why it is falling down now we need to give a collider to the ball so that it can collide with other game objects. So I'm going to go to add component, physics 2D and give it a circle collider 2D because our ball has a circular shape. So if you go ahead and zoom in, uh, first of all I'm going to disable the gizmo of the camera because uh, it's making problem. So I'm going to disable it. So as you can see here, we have a green outline. That means our ball has a collider attached to it. All right. So now we have a collider attached to the ball, but still the ball will fall down because our paddle doesn't have a collider. All right. So now we're going to select our paddle blue and let's rename it to paddle. And now I'm going to go to add component, go to physics 2D and add a capsule collider 2d object and as you can see here we have the capsule added to the paddle and now we can click on this edit collider button and edit the collider directly from here and as you can see the direction of the capsule is set to vertical so that means if we change the x or y size it will still remain vertical like this it will still remain vertical but we want it to be horizontal so that's why we're going to change the direction from vertical to horizontal. And now if I change the X or the Y values, and as you can see, it will shrink down like this. And it will simply uh, take the shape of any object that you want. In this case, we want it to take the shape of this paddle. You can also select this edit collider button and edit it directly from here. So anything that you think is more suitable for you, you can use that option and create a collider around it. So now we have a nice capsule collider all around our paddle. All right. So now our paddle is ready to take all the collisions. So now if I go ahead and click on play, you will see this time the ball will fall down, but it will not go through the paddle. That's because our paddle has a collider attached to it now. All right. So now let's go ahead and move on to the next step. Now let's make the ball bounce. To make the ball bounce, we need to add a physics material to the ball. So to do that, we're going to go to this assets folder, right click, create, and from here we're going to create a physics material 2D, and we're going to name it bounce, not bounce, <laughs> bounce. And now we're going to change its friction from this point to zero that means we don't want any friction and we're going to change the bounciness 
to 1. All right. So now our bounciness is set to 1. That means the ball has the maximum bounce property. Okay. So now if I go ahead and click on play, you will see the ball will fall down and it will bounce, but it is not bouncing. And that's because we have created the property, but we have not added it to the ball. So as you can see here, we have the circle collider 2D and here we have the material. We can simply drag and drop our bounce property in the material. So let's drag it and drop it on the material. So our ball now has this bounce property attached to it. Now we can click on play and you will see the ball keeps bouncing and this is the first movable thing you have created and probably you will love this. All right. So the ball is the ball is bouncing. So we have done the first step. Now what we need to do is we need to move our paddle and also we need to add some force to the ball. To do all these things we need to create our very first scripts. All right. The scripts give behavior to our game objects. In this case, we want to give some behavior to the paddle and also to the ball. So first of all, let's try to move our paddle left and right. So let's go ahead and create a new script. So I'm going to go inside the scripts folder, right click, create a new C sharp script and make sure to rename it directly here because if you try to rename it later, you will not be able to do it. So let's name it paddle controller or simply you can name it paddle because that's simpler so let's make it paddle now we can select our paddle and drag and drop the script right here so now the paddle script is attached to our paddle that means anything that we write inside the paddle will control or will affect the paddle now i can simply double click on it to open it in visual studio now in your case if you have selected any other code editor it may open there so here as you can see our script has been opened in visual studio i'm gonna zoom in to make it a little bit bigger now here we need to write our very first code so first of all we're gonna create a new variable called rigid body 2d so here we're gonna create a new variable and we're gonna write rigid body 2d rigid body 2d and we're gonna name it rb so this variable will store a reference to the rigid body that we have attached to our paddle and then we can use that reference to move our paddle so now here we're going to create a new function called void awake so this function gets called even before the start function automatically by unity so whenever we need to get a reference to any objects we need to use this awake function now let's go back to unity and check few things so if I go back to unity and select our paddle, you can see we have not attached a rigid body to our paddle. So first of all, we need to go to add component, physics 2D and add a rigid body to the component to our paddle. All right. Now, as you can see, this one has this gravity as well, but we don't want our uh, paddle to fall down. So if I click on play, you will see our paddle will fall down along with the ball. But we don't want that so that's why we're going to make the gravity scale zero and then from the constraints we're going to change the we're going to use the freeze position z and we're going to check it freeze rotation z and we're going to check it that means we don't want our paddle to rotate around z axis like this so we want it to stay still and not move so like this so now what we can do is from our script we need to get a reference to this rigid body 2D that is attached to this component. And then by using the rigid body 2D and by using the physics functions, we need to move our paddle using some physics forces. So let's save it and go back to our scripts. And in the awake function, we're going to say RB equals get component. And within this angle brackets, we're going to write rigid body 2D and then we're going to give a pair of parentheses. So this is the syntax when we want to get access to any component that is attached to our game object. In this case, we are getting access to the rigid body 2D component that is attached to our paddle and we are storing it inside this RV variable. All right, then we can do anything 
with this rigid body attached to or anything with the rigid body that is attached to our panel using this RB reference. All right. Now here we're gonna create another variable. We're gonna name it public float move speed. So this is the speed by which we want to move our paddle to the left and right direction. So here we're going to create a new function. We're going to call it void touch move. So inside this function, we're going to give all the functionalities that we have uh, for our paddle to move or for the touch input. All right. So first of all, to detect if we have touched on the screen or if you have clicked on the screen, we're going to say if input dot get mouse button not btt input dot get get mouse button zero so we want to detect if we have pressed the left mouse button on our mouse and the left mouse button on our mouse will work as the touch input on our android device as well so we want to detect whether we are pressing on the screen or whether we are we are clicking on the screen. So to do that, this is what we have to do. All right. So this one will check if we are clicking on the screen. And if we are clicking on the screen, now we have to detect whether we are clicking on the left side of the screen or whether we are clicking on the right side of the screen. To do that, first of all, we need to get the position where we are touching. So to do that, I'm going to create a new variable vector to touch pose. So this variable will store the position where we have touched. And how we will how will we get the touch position? We will get at from the mouse position. So we're gonna say input dot mouse position. So here we have our mouse, and if I click on the screen, it will call the input dot get mouse button function. So if I'm pressing here, it will call the input dot get mouse button function. And now, as you can see, the center of the screen is 0, 0. And on the left and right, we have the x-axis. And on the left, we have the negative values. And on the right, we have the positive values. So here, at the center, we have 0. Then minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4. Here we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So, like this, we have to detect whether we are pressing at a position where the x value is negative. Then we want to move the paddle to the left. And if we are clicking on the position where the x value is positive, then we have to move the paddle to the right. All right. So now we, let's move back to our script. And here, as you can see, we are getting the touch position. And then we are getting the mouse position where we are touching. But this will not work because this is in screen coordinates. But whenever we are working on the games, most of the time we need the world coordinates. Now to convert it to screen to world coordinates, we need to write camera dot main dot screen to not screen point array screen to world point and then within parentheses we need to pass this position. So now it will take this position, convert it from screen point to world point, and then store it inside this touch pose variable. All right. So now we need to check if touch pose dot x is less than zero. That means we are pressing on the left side of the screen. And else if touch pose dot x is greater than zero. All right. Or we can simply write else here. So if we are pressing at a position where the x value is negative, then we want to move to the left move left and if we are pressing at a position where the x value is positive then we're gonna move to the right all right so how can we move to the left and how can we move to the right to move to the left we're gonna say rb that is our rigid body dot velocity so we're gonna give a velocity value to our rigid body and how much is the velocity we're gonna say vector 2 dot left multiply move speed so here we are adding a move speed on the left direction on our velocity value 
So now, whatever value we'll give, it will move to the left side of our screen. The same way, we're going to move it to the right side. So we can simply go ahead and copy it and paste it right here. And instead of writing vector3.left, we're going to simply write vector3.right. So now we're going to add this force or multiply this force on the right direction of our screen. And then we're going to store the velocity in our rigid body. This is the amount of velocity that we are adding to our rigid body. So now, whenever we are clicking on the left, it will move to the left. Whenever we are clicking on the right, it will move to the right. But when we are not clicking anywhere, we want our battle to stop. Otherwise, it will keep moving. So here, right here with this if statement, with this if statement, the outer one, we can add an else statement. Here we're going to say else. That means if we are not clicking on the screen, then we're going to say rv dot velocity equals vector 2 dot 0. So when we are not clicking anywhere, we want the velocity of the paddle to be 0. Now let's move back to Unity. And here we have our paddle. And here we have the paddle script. And here we have the move speed value. So let's keep a value of 8. And then click on play. But it will not work. And when I click on the left and right, nothing works. And the paddle goes down. So as you can see, nothing works and the paddle goes down. So what we can do is we can simply check the freeze position on X and Y so that the paddle will not move on the... Uh, I think we're going to check the freeze position to Y so that the paddle will not move down. It will only move to the left and right. And now if we go back to our script, you can see that we have created this function touch move but we have not used it anywhere so we have to call it from somewhere so that we can use it to do that we can create another function void fixed update so here as you can see we are moving our paddle using the physics functions or the physics properties and whenever we are using physics properties we need to call that inside this fixed update function so this fixed update function inside the fixed update function we're going to write touch move so here we have our touch move function and now this fixed update function is automatically get called by unity again and again and again every physics frame so it will automatically get called every frame and this function will get called automatically because we have written it inside this so all this code will get called again and again and again and all these things will be happened again and again and again all right so now let's save the script and move back to Unity. And this time I'm going to click on play. And I'm going to click on left. And as you can see, our paddle moves left. I can click on right, our paddle moves right. So this way, whenever I click on the left and right, our paddle can move. And as you can see, it cannot move beyond that because we have colliders attached to our boundaries. In the same way, I can move it to the right. And as you can see, this is how we can move our paddle. If you want, you can simply go ahead and move the change the speed from 8 to 10 and we can move it faster. Alright? So you can adjust it according to your own wish and your paddle is ready. So now we need to add some code or we need to write a script for our ball so that we can make it bounce whenever we want and do whenever we want. So let's start coding the ball. So first of all, inside the scripts folder, right click create a new C sharp script and I'm going to name it ball now I'm going to select our ball and drag and drop the ball script right here so here we have the ball script attached to the ball and then double click to open it in Visual Studio so the same way first of all we need to get a reference to the rigid body that is attached to the ball so here we are going to first of all create a new variable rigid body 2d rv and then inside the awake function we're going to get access to it so rv equals get component rigid body 2d so here we are getting access to the rigid body 2d now we're going to use it to move or bounce the ball so now we're going to create another variable and we're going to call it float bounce force and we're going to make it public because if we make it public, then we can change it or change the value from our Unity editor. Now, what we can do is, 
we don't need this uh function so what we can do is we can first of all create a function named bounce so you can name it void bounce or to be more precise we're going to write start bounce so what this function will do is this function will make our ball move to a random direction or add force to our ball in random direction so first of all we're going to create a new variable vector to random direction and how can we get the random direction to get the random direction first of all we need to create a new vector to new vector to then for the x value, we're going to choose a random value. And to choose a random value, we need to write random.range. And inside the range, we're going to write negative 1 as the minimum value and positive 1 as the maximum value. And then for the y value of the vector 2, we need to write 1. Alright. So this is how we are getting the random direction. So this random direction is a vector2 variable. So we are creating a vector2 here. And the vector2 has two values, x value and y value. So this one before the comma, whole thing is an x value. And we are making the x value random between negative 1 and positive 1. And we are making the y value as 1. Now we need to get, now we need to use this random value and add force to our ball in this random direction. To do that, we're going to say rb dot add force and we need to give a direction in which we want to add the force. For that, we're going to write random direction and by how much amount we add the want to add the force, we're going to multiply it with bounce force variable that we have created. So that means we are adding a force in the random direction by the amount of this bounce force. And then we can write a comma and here we can write force mode 2d dot impulse it will give even more force to our ball and it will make it easier for us to make our ball move faster in lower uh, bounce force value so now all we need to do is we need to call this start bounce function sometime so in this case, whenever we are clicking or pressing on our screen or whenever we are pressing any key, we want to start this bounce function. So inside the update function, we're going to say if input dot any key down. So whenever we are pressing any key or touching anywhere on the screen, then we want to call this start bounce function. So whenever we are clicking anywhere, we want to make our ball start bouncing and from there we can start uh, working on the game so now that we have done all these things so whenever we're going to touch anywhere our ball should start bouncing so let's go back to our unity editor here we have our ball so we can give a value to this bounce force so for now i think let's give a value of 10 all right and also i'm going to select the ball and change its gravity scale from 1 to 0 because we don't want it to move and fall down now if I click on play and if I press any key or just touch on the screen as you can see a random force has been added to the ball so if I go ahead and start again this time again I can click on anywhere and as you can see a, the force is added to the ball in a random direction so I can click on play and start again and if I click random force has been added and the ball keeps moving and goes down and i can also move the paddle to make the ball bounce so what we can do is we can make the bounce force a little bit smaller like eight or five and that will be more accurate so now we have added the script to the ball as well as to the paddle so now we can move the paddle and also we can move the ball or make the ball bounce now we need to do other things like when the ball falls down, we need to restart the game. We also need to add scores and we also need to create the menu. So that's what we're going to do next. Okay, so now let's see how we can restart the game when the ball falls down. So to handle all these things, all these different mechanisms of the game, we're going to create a new script called game manager and we're going to create a new game manager object that will handle all these things so here we're gonna right click and we're gonna create an empty game object and we're gonna name it 
game manager then we're gonna create a new script inside the scripts folder and we're gonna name it game manager now we're gonna simply drag and drop the game manager script on our game manager game object let me wait for you to load it all right now let's double click to open it in visual studio so here we have our game manager now we want uh, all our scripts to access this game manager script easily because here we will have all the controls of the game so that's why we're gonna make it a static instance and when we create a static instance all other scripts will have easy access to this game manager script so here we're gonna write public static game manager instance then we're going to create the awake function and inside the awake function we're going to say instance equals this all right so here we are creating a static instance of the game manager and we are setting the instance to this instance that is the instance that we have in the game to this game manager so if we write this code then all our other scripts will have easy access to this game manager and all its public functions okay so now here we're going to create a new public function public void restart so this function will help us to restart the game whenever something happens like whenever the ball falls down now to restart the game we need to reload the scene and to reload the scene we need to import or use another namespace because the functions that we have there are part of another namespace so first of all here we need to write using unity engine dot scene management okay so now that we have imported the scene management now we can use different functions from this scene management uh, namespace so inside we start we're going to say scene manager not mang oops not mang scene manager dot load scene and which scene we want to load we want to reload the current scene that we have that is we have only one scene in the game and we want to reload that one so either you can write within quotation the name of the scene so in this case the name of the scene is game so you're going to write it or there are other ways to do it as well but in this case we're going to keep it simple and simply write the name of the scene so if you go to unity you can see if you go inside the scenes folder let me wait for it to uh, finish loading as you can see the name of the scene is game and you need to write it exactly as it is written here so what will happen is whenever restart function gets called this game scene will get reloaded that is it will start from beginning and load again okay so now what we need to do is now we need to check when the paddle falls down on something that is when the paddle goes out of the screen so to check that what we're going to do is here we're going to create a new empty game object and we're going to name it uh what we're going to name it we're going to name it let's say fall check okay we're gonna reset its position then we're gonna position it somewhere like this out of the screen so this square that you are seeing this is the camera or the camera view of our scene and anything outside of this is outside of the screen so we want the ball we want whenever the ball goes out of the screen then uh, we want to restart the scene so we're gonna select this fall check go to add component physics 2d and we're going to add a box collider 2d now we're going to click on this edit collider button and simply drag it to make it large enough like this so now whenever the ball goes out of the screen it will collide with this it will collide with this fall check and then we're gonna uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna restart the game so whenever our ball collides with this object which is outside of the screen then we're going to restart the scene all right 
Now, another thing we can do is we can go ahead and add a tag to this one. So, as you can see here, we have a tag and currently it is untagged. So, you're going to click here, click on add tag, click on add and here we're going to say fall check. Okay. Now, again, we're going to select this one from the tag, select fall check. So, now we have this fall check tag attached to this fall check uh, fall check object so now all we need to do is we need to go our we need to go to our ball script so here we have our ball script and we need to find a way so that we can detect whether the ball is colliding with anything so to detect that unity has a very good function called on collision enter 2d so you're going to write void on collision enter 2d and exactly like this so now what we can do is we can simply check if the ball is colliding with the game object which has this fall check tag attached so to do that we're going to say if collision dot game object dot tag equals fall check and if this happens then we're going to say we can simply restart the game and to restart the game we're going to say game manager dot instance dot restart so this is how it will call the restart function from our game manager script from our uh, ball script so here whenever our ball will collide with any other collider this function will get called automatically by unity and then inside this collision variable it will pass information about the object with which we are colliding so from this object or from this variable we will get the access to uh, whatever thing it has collided with so we are checking if we have collided with an object which has this false check tag attached then we're going to simply restart the game or restart the scene so if you see here you can see here we have this false check tag attached to this game object so whenever our ball will go out of the screen it will collide with this one and this one will call the restart function and our game will be restarted so let's see let's click on play click and ball goes out of the screen and it gets restarted again ball goes out of the screen and it automatically gets restarted again so our restart mechanism is working fine as you can see here okay so now let's go ahead and create the scoring mechanism for the game so whenever our ball will touch the paddle we're gonna increase the score so first of all let us go ahead and create an ui element that will display the score on the screen so to do that we're gonna click here go to ui and create a new text object so as you can see we have a text object here but we cannot see it in the scene if i double click on it we can see here we have a new text selected we can go here and click on reset to reset its position and now as you can see now it's in the center now i can double click to go here now whenever we create a new ui element a canvas object comes automatically with it so all our ui elements are part of this canvas now what we want to do is we want to make this canvas such a way so that it will scale with any screen size that we want so that our ui elements will not be so much smaller or bigger or go out of the screen so we're going to select the canvas go to canvas scalar component and click on scale with screen size and for the screen resolution we're going to give 1920 by 1080 just the resolution that we are using so now it should work correctly now i can select our text go to this rect tool and increase the size of the box that we have inside which we have our text then we can put it on the center like this okay now we can reset the position reset its position like this so here we have our text position and now what we can do is we can select the text and from the alignment we're going to make it center on uh, vertical 
axis and center on the horizontal axis as well. So this is where our text is now. Now we can go ahead and change the font size and increase it like this. And let's change the text to zero so that it represent our score. Now for the font, we have I have downloaded few fonts from the Kenny.nl website. You can go ahead and download any other free fonts from any other free fonts website like Da Font or anything. So I can go to font, click on this small circle, and now I can select the fonts that I have here. So I can select this font or this font. I think I'm gonna use this one, and then I'm gonna increase the font size like this. Then I'm gonna position it somewhere like this increase the font size a little more i think i cannot increase it anymore so i think this one should look good let's check how much it can go so 10 100 so if we make anything more than 10 it cannot show it so let's go ahead and make the size a little bit bigger something like this and then position it on the center Okay, now it can show 100, 1000, 10,000, anything that you want. So let's make it zero. And now for the color, let's make it white. And now uh, the alpha value of the color, we're going to make it smaller, something like this. So that it becomes a little bit transparent, something like this. And whenever the score increases, it shows somehow like this. So this is zero, this one, this is two. This is 10, 100, and this is how our score will be shown on the screen. Okay, so now that we have created the score, let's rename it to score, score text. Now we need to find a way to increase our score, and also we need to find a way to update the value of score on the screen. Okay, so let's go back to our scripts. And here we have this game manager script and inside the game manager first of all we need to create a function called score up public void score up so this function will handle the scoring mechanism of our game so first of all here we need to create a new integer variable called int score which will store the value of our score so initially it will become it will be zero and after that it will slowly increment to one two three four like this and another thing we need to do is we need to create another variable to store the text element of the score that we have created the score text that we have created to do that here we're going to say text score text so this text is our ui element text but as you can see currently it says red that's because we have not implemented or we have not imported or we have not used the namespace inside which we have all the ui elements in unity so in unity if we want to use the ui elements then we need to write using unity engine dot ui so now as you can see as soon as i write ui this text becomes green and now it is a valid uh, statement so now what we can do is inside the score up function we're going to say score plus plus that means increment the value of score by one so whenever the score up function will get called we will increase the value of score variable by one and along with that we can also update the value on the screen so we need to update the value of our score text which is shown on the screen to do that we're going to say score text dot text that is we are changing the text property of the score text and we are setting it to score so we are changing the text property of our score text that we have on the screen and we are setting the value to the score value that we have so if it is 0 it will show 0 on screen if it is 10 it will show 10 on screen but this one is an is a string variable and this score is an integer variable so we need to convert it to a string so we're going to write score dot to string and now everything should work fine now our score will be incremented whenever the score up function will get called and it will also show the updated score on the screen now we're going to make it public 
we're going to make our score text variable public because we need to drag and drop our score text in this reference so that we can get access to that score text. So now we need to go back to our ball script. And as you can see here, we are checking if our ball is colliding with the fall check. The same way we're going to say else if collision.gameobject.tag equals paddle. So if our ball collides with the paddle, then we're going to simply call the score up function from our game manager. So here we're going to say game manager instance dot score up. All right. So now whenever our paddle or our ball collides with the paddle, then this score up function will get called and our score will be incremented and also the update score will be shown on the screen. So here we have our game manager and here it is waiting for the reference to the score text. So we're going to drag and drop the score text right here. Now I'm going to click on play. And now let me click on here. And when the ball touches it, as you can see, the score is not getting incremented. So the problem is that we need to check if our ball is colliding with the game object, which has the paddle tag attached. But in this case, our paddle doesn't have a tag. So we need to go to this tag, add tag, create a new tag, call it paddle, and then select our paddle and add this paddle tag to it. So now if I click on play, I can simply go ahead and start moving and our ball, okay. As you can see, whenever the ball collides with this one, this thing happens. Now, as you can see, there's a weird behavior. Whenever we're clicking here, the ball is going to another direction. And that's because whenever we are clicking on the screen, the ball is getting a force and it is starting to get a new velocity in a new random direction. So let's go ahead and fix that. So now we need to find a way so that our ball gets bounced only once when the game starts and then again, no, no matter whatever key we press, it should not bounce. To do that, we're going to go back to our script. We're going to go to this ball script. And here we're going to create a new variable. We're going to call it bool game started. So this variable has, this variable can contain only two values, either true or false. And uh, whenever the game starts, initially it should be false and whenever the ball goes up we're gonna set it to true okay so initially it automatically becomes false whenever we create a bool variable then we're gonna say if not game started that is the game started is false only then if we are pressing any key then start bounce okay so if game has not been started only then if we press any key start bouncing and if the game has started then don't do anything because in that case uh, we don't want to do that so after starting bounce we're gonna say game started equals true so now the value of game start is true so this statement will not work and we're gonna not add the bounce force to the ball once again. So let's see how that's working. So here we have the Unity scene. I'm gonna click on play and I'm gonna click as you can see the ball goes up and the it restarts, ball goes up, it collides with the paddle, the score goes up and if I go ahead and move out the ball goes down and it restarts. So our scoring mechanism and our restarting game mechanism is working fine. So now let's start creating the menu items or the game name and the text and all these things. So inside the canvas, I'm gonna right click, create UI and click on panel. And as you can see, a new panel has been created and I'm gonna call it game start UI. So all our starting elements will be inside this UI element. Okay. Now initially we want to disable the score text. So we're going to select the score text, 
and disable it because it will help us to create this scene better. Now inside this game start UI, I'm going to right click, create UI and click on text. So here we have another text and we're going to call it, we're going to give it the, na the name of our game. You can give it any name that you want. First of all, let me go ahead and reset its position. Then I'm going to give it a name ball. Then I'm going to select the rec tool, double click on it and make it bigger. Something like this. Then we're going to increase its font size, make it center, center, change its font to this one or this one, anything that you prefer. I think I'm going to make it this one. Change its font size even more. Make it bigger on both sides. Center it. Change its color from this one to white maybe or yellow anything that you'd prefer mm, I think this one looks doesn't look that bad let's see if the white looks good or bad let's keep it like this ball then I'm gonna double click on I'm gonna right click on it click on duplicate Move it down and this time I'm going to change the text to bounce. So ball bounce, this is the name of our game and this is how it's going to show here. I think I'm going to move the ball a little bit downwards. Let's double click on the ball. Put it a little bit downwards. Where is our ball? We cannot even see it on the screen. Okay, so I think we're going to put it somewhere like this. Something like this. Okay. On top of our paddle. Now that we have done it, we need to create another text. So I'm going to select the game start UI. Right click. UI. Text. Or we can simply duplicate that one. So let's delete that and duplicate this text. So right click duplicate and we're gonna move it downwards and this time we're gonna change the text this time we're gonna uh, decrease the font size and this time we're gonna change the text to press any key to start okay so this will show up here so that we know so that the player knows that whenever you press any key, the game will start. We can also go ahead and set both of this on the same line if we want. Let's see how that looks. We can change it again later. We can set it on the same line. I think this one is looking better than what we had before. So I think I'm going to keep it like this. So ball bounce, it's all about adjusting, you can adjust it and make it look like the way that you want. I think we don't even need the second text then, we're gonna disable this one, select the first one, make it bigger and change the text to ball bounce, okay? And then center it like this, increase the font size a little more, increase it a little more. So this is all about adjusting your game and making it look the way, giving it the look you want. So here we have press any key to start and here we have the ball bounce and here we have the game start UI inside which we have all these things. So if I go ahead and disable it, as you can see, all the elements will be disabled. Okay, so that's what we gonna do. So let's save the scene. Now we're going to go to our game manager. We're going to go to our game manager. Here we're going to create public game object game start 
UI. And then whenever the game starts, we're gonna whenever the game starts, we're gonna enable it or disable it depending on that. Okay. So there are di various different ways by which we can enable it or disable it. So one way to do that is that whenever the game starts inside the ball function, inside the ball script, as you can see, we are checking if input dot any key down, then do this. So here, when the game started becomes true, we can also say game manager dot instance dot game start UI dot set active false. So whenever you want to deactivate anything, you need to call this set active function. So now whenever the game starts, we're going to deactivate the starting UI. And along with that, we need to reactivate our, we need to reactivate our score text. Okay. So we can also say game manager or instead of doing all these things, what we can do is we can do all these things directly from our game manager. So inside the game manager, we can create a new function. We can create a public function, public void game start. And inside it, we're going to say game start UI dot set active false. So whenever the game starts, we're going to set it to false. And then we're going to say score text dot game object dot set active to true. So whenever this game start function will get called, we're going to deactivate the start UI and activate the score. Now from the ball script we need to simply call game manager dot instance dot game start. Okay so now all these things will be controlled directly from here. So now let's go back to Unity and here we have all these things. Now we need to simply go to our game manager and see if we have any references to be given here as you can see it's it's waiting to get the game start ui so we're gonna drag and drop the game start ui directly here now we can click on play and whenever we click on whenever we click anywhere the game start ui goes on the score text appears and whenever the ball goes down it starts or restarts again so this is how the game will look like and this is how it is looking like so our whole game mechanism is ready. So now all we need to do is we need to build it and publish it and install it on our Android device. So now let's go ahead and see how we can build and publish it on Android. So we're going to go to this file, build settings, and in order to make sure that the scenes are added to the build, to do that you can simply click on this add open scenes. Then you can go to this player settings and here the player settings will open and here we need to do few things first of all as you can see the company name is given default company here you can give any company name that you want to give it you can also call it give it your own name i'm gonna simply write charger games then here you need to select an icon you can either select this icon or this icon i think i'm gonna select this icon then from the resolution and presentation, as you can see here, we have this auto rotation selected, but we don't want that. We're going to select landscape left because if we select auto rotate, then whenever the mobile will be vertical, our game will get rotated and it will look very bad. So now we need to do the most important things. If you go to this other settings, you can see here we have under identification, we have this package name. So this is very, very important. You need to give it a package name that's unique. As you can see, it is written com.chargergames.unityandroidproject. And that's because 
I have already written charger games there. So now in newer versions, Unity writes this automatically. But if you, if in your case, it doesn't write it automatically, then what you can do is you can write com dot name of your company or name of your domain, like in my case, charger games dot name of the game. That is in this case, I'm going to write Android project or Android test or let's say let's write ball bounce and then you can give it a version whenever you create a new version you need to give it give you a new version here and then here we have few more settings make sure this ARM v7 is checked and if you want to select this ARM 64 then you need to change the scripting backend from mono to IL to CPP Okay, as you can see now this option is opened. If you want to publish it on Google Play Store, then you need to do this. Otherwise, you can simply clip it mono and then keep it like this. And all these things should work fine as they are already here. Now we can close it. And now I can simply click on this build button. Here we can create a new folder named build and open it and here i'm going to give the file name ball bounce and click on save and whenever we click on save unity will convert it to an apk and it will save it there and if you don't have the android build support android sdk ndk and jdk downloaded then it will not happen you will get a lot of errors so make sure those things are installed so let me wait for it to build and then i can show it to you so now as you can see it has finished building the apk as you can see here we have the ball bounce apk file created so you can simply go ahead and copy and paste it or move it to your own android device or you can send it email it to your own device and then install it and then you can play it on your mobile device so this way you can build it another way to do that is by clicking build and run so if you click on build and run then you can directly run it on your own android device while after building it so to do that you need to make sure that you have an android device connected to your computer via usb cable and once you have that only after that you can click on this build and run and it will automatically run on your mobile device also you need to make sure that you have usb debugging turned on on your device if you don't know how to turn it on then simply go ahead and google search uh, giving the name of your device company then it will show how to turn on the usb debugging or developer options in your mobile device now i have my android device attached to my computer via a usb cable and i have also the usb debugging turned on so now it will be easy for us to install the uh, build and run the android app so we can click on this build and run and then it will ask us to select a folder. I think I'm gonna create a new uh, inside this builds. I'm gonna name it Paul Bounce 2. Click on save. It is building and now it will find an Android device. It will find my device and then it will install it. As you can see, it is uh, creating the project, creating the build, and finally it will run it and install it on my mobile device. Here as you can see it says copying apk package to this device this is the name of my device so it's automatically installing it here and then it will run it so currently the game is running on my mobile device and i can play it here so in my mobile device i can simply click left and right and move it and the paddle will move and whenever the ball falls down it goes and restarts again the, so the game is working absolutely fine on my android device and it's working so this is how you can go ahead and build and run the game on your mobile device okay so this way we have learned how to build a complete simple android game from start to finish using unity game engine and c sharp hey there thank you so much for checking out this video if you want to learn more and build some more cool Android games like 3D runners, 2D runners, 2D racing games and more of this stuff, then you can check out my complete game development courses from the links in the description below. So you can check the links in the description below, join my courses and learn how to build more Android games, publish them to Google Play and implement video ads in your game and all this stuff. 
So thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, you can subscribe to my channel to get more of this content. And I'm going to see you in another video. Hey everyone, this is Raja from Charger Games and welcome back to another new video. Now before doing the setup process, let me show you what you're going to be building at the end of this project. So as you can see here, we have a very simple game. I'm going to click on maximize on play and I'm going to click on play. And you will see here we have the balls bouncing and we have to simply tap on these balls to shoot the balls and destroy the balls. And it's pretty hard because the balls are small and they are bouncing so it's not as easy as it seems. So let me try and destroy the balls. Now this is the best part when you make your own game and you cannot play it yourself. That's really awesome feeling. So this way when you destroy the last ball and destroy all the balls you can see this you win message on the screen and you can simply click on this restart button and it will start playing again. So this is how the final game will look like. So now that we have seen what you're going to be building let's get started building our first game. So now we need to go to this projects tab and from here we need to simply click on new and it will ask us what kind of project we want to create. Now in this case we want to create a 2D project so that's uh, that's why we're going to select this 2D one. If you want to create a 3D project you can select this 3D. Then from here you can give it a name. Let's name it Android Game Test. And then you can select the location where you want to save your project. I always save my Unity projects in this location but you can save it anywhere you want. Then you can simply click on create and it will create a new project for us. So let us wait for it. So as you can see here Unity has finished creating a new project and this is how the new project looks like when you open it for the very first time. Now in my case I don't really like this kind of layout. So what you can do is you can go to the top right corner and instead of default you can simply click on this 2x3. In this 2x3 layout we can see the scene view and the game view both together. So the scene is the place where we create the game and the game view is what we see through the camera. Okay. So now what we need to do is we need to convert it to an Android version. As you can see currently it says PC, Mac, Linux standalone. So this is what platform your game will be uh, when you open it for the very first time. So now we need to go to file, build settings and as you can see here we have this Android thing. Now if you don't have, if you have not installed the Android build support while installing Unity then you will not see this option, okay? So make sure to install the Android build support otherwise you will not see this. Let me go ahead and show you two one more time. Let's say here I have my uh, installed versions. So what you can do is you can simply click here and click on add modules and from here you can simply select this Android build support. And even if you have not installed it before, it will install it from here and then you will be able to do anything that you want with Unity. So now you can simply click on this Android and then click on switch platform. Now this is really really essential otherwise you will not be able to build for Android. You can do this step after building this game but you have to do it at some point of time. So let's click on switch platform and switch the platform from PC to Android. So now the build target of our project has been converted to Android. As you can see the Unity logo next to Android now. And here as well you can see the Android. That means currently Android is our build platform. So now as you can see in the game view free aspect is written. So from here we're going to click here. And we're going to select this 16 is to 9 portrait. And this is the resolution for which we're going to build our game. Alright. Now as you can see here we have our scene already saved as sample scene. You can go ahead and rename it to game and reload. So now the name of our scene is game. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand this game from our hierarchy. Click on main camera and for the clear flags as you can see probably in your case skybox may be selected you need to select this solid color and for the background color you can give it a nice orange like color or any color that you would like it to give. I think I'm going to select this color because 
it looks good so i'm going to keep it here so now we need to add some balls to the game and also we need to add the boundaries in our game so to create the boundaries first of all i'm going to go to this assets folder right click create a new folder and i'm going to name it sprites and inside this sprites folder we're going to keep all of our 2d sprites or 2d images that we're going to use in our game so inside this sprites folder i'm going to right click create sprites and then i'm going to select this square and i'm going to name it boundary i think and this is the square that we're going to use to fill our whole game boundary so now i can simply drag and drop this boundary in our hierarchy like this and now we can simply go ahead and edit the size of this square let's say i make it smaller like this and for the size let's say i'm going to give the x size to 10. so now that we have created our first boundary we have to give it a feature so that our balls can collide with the boundary currently this is just a 2d image so we need to give it a wall so that our balls can collide with it to do that i'm going to go to this add component and from here i'm going to go to physics 2d and from here i'm going to select this box collider 2d option so now as you can see if you zoom in you will see that here we have a green outline if i click on edit collider you can see here we have a green outline and this means this is a wall like collider which will enable this one to collide with other objects in our game all right now let me go ahead and change the color of it a little bit so as you can see here we have this sprite renderer property from here we're going to select the color and we're going to make it i think a little bit something like this of course you are free to give it any color that you want i'm just giving it as i'm uh, feeling right so now i'm gonna select this tool and then i'm gonna move it onto the top of our screen like this as you can see now the boundary has moved to the top of our screen now i'm gonna right click and click on duplicate and as you can see now we have the second boundary i can simply go ahead and move it like this uh, and let me unmove it by pressing ctrl z or i can simply go ahead and change the y position to minus 4.89 and it will automatically be on the bottom okay now let me go ahead and duplicate it one more time this time i'm gonna move it like this then i'm gonna simply go ahead and change the z rotation to 90 and now as you can see our square has been rotated by 90 degrees i can simply drag it to move it on the right side of our screen just like this all right now the same way i'm gonna right click and duplicate this one and this time i'm gonna change its x position to minus 2.68 and it will be exactly on the opposite side of this uh, boundary so now we have all these four boundaries set up now what we can do is we can create our new ball object and add it to our game scene now here inside the sprites folder you can see i have this small image of a ball that i have got from kenny.nl website and you can get any image of ball from the internet and then you can use it so i'm going to drag and drop it in our hierarchy like this and as you can see here we have our ball and we can move it like this now we need to add a collider to our ball as well so i'm going to go to add component physics studio and this time you're going to select the circle collider 2d and let me find where it is so here we have this circle collider 2d so this circle collider is for the circular objects okay now what we need to do is we need to add a rigid body object to this ball so we want our ball to be affected by physics so unity has some 
default things that handle physics and if we want unity's physics engine to handle the physics of this ball then we need to add the rigid body 2d element to this ball so we can simply click on add component physics 2d and then we can click on this rigid body 2d so as you can see now we have this rigid body 2d component attached to the ball so now it has all the physics properties and as you can see here we have this gravity scale set to 1 that means now the ball will be affected by gravity and you can see that whenever I click on play so let me go ahead and click on play and you will see the ball gets affected by gravity and it falls down all right so now the gravity of the ball is working now we need to make the ball bounce because when the ball falls down of course we want it to bounce so to do that I'm gonna right click here and create a new physics material 2d and I'm gonna name it bounce and I'm gonna set the friction to 0 and set the bounciness to 1 that means now it will bounce for endless time now you can select the ball and as you can see in the circle collided 2d we have this material slot and it is waiting for us to drag and drop a physics material 2d here so I'm gonna drag and drop the bounce material right here and now you will see when I click on play the ball falls down and it keeps bouncing so this is really cool so finally we have at least added a little bit of behavior to our game now what do I want to do is I want to make the size of the ball a little bit bigger because otherwise it will be very hard for us to tap on the ball and destroy the ball so let me go ahead and make the scale 3 3 and believe me I was playing it in 2 and 1 and it's really really hard even in 3 it's really hard to play this game so I think I'm gonna keep it 3 for now so let's name the ball ball 1 and this should be okay now we need to write a script and attach it to the ball so that whenever we click on the ball the ball gets destroyed all right so now inside the assets I'm gonna create a new folder and I'm gonna name it scripts now you can simply create the scripts anywhere but it's always a good idea to stay organized and keep everything in the folders so that your project stays organized so inside the scripts I'm gonna right click create a new C sharp script and I'm gonna name it ball and you have to name it exactly when you create the script otherwise it will not work so make sure the ball here and the ball here both are same otherwise it will not work so now I'm gonna select the ball one and simply drag and drop the ball script on here alright so now the ball script is attached to our ball game object in the scene now I can simply double click on this ball to open it in Visual Studio or any other code editor that you have selected here so as you can see here we have our script opened in Visual Studio and let me make the font size a little bit bigger so now we don't need uh, I think we don't need both of these things but still let's keep them there for now so here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write a new function called void on mouse down alright so this on mouse down function gets called automatically whenever we click with mouse on this object so in this case the script is attached to the ball so whenever we click our mouse on top of the ball this function gets called and we can do whatever we want inside this function all right and this works for the touch as well so don't think that I'm uh, using this on mouse down function so it will not work on Android it will work on any touch device as well so here whenever the on mouse down happens what we need to do is we need to simply destroy the ball so here we're gonna write destroy and inside the brackets we're gonna write game object now make sure to write it exactly as I have written the G small and the O bigger otherwise it's not gonna work okay 
So now whenever the on mouse down function gets called, that is whenever we tap on the ball, the ball should get destroyed. So let's go back to Unity and see if this works or not. So make sure to click, uh, make sure to press Control S to save the scene or save the script. And now here we are in our Unity project. So here we have our ball. So let me click on play and you will see the ball keeps bouncing and let me click on it. And as you can see, as soon as I click on it, the ball gets destroyed. So that means our code is working as of now. All right. So now what else we need to do? We need to also increase the score and we need to add few more balls and whenever we destroy all the balls, we need to write on the screen that you win. So now let's go ahead and create few more of these balls. So I'm gonna select this ball, right click and duplicate or I can simply press Ctrl D to duplicate it. So here we have another ball. I'm gonna select this move tool and move it right here and I'm gonna I think I'm gonna keep the make the size about 3.5 and 3.5 and now I'm gonna select the sprite color and I will change it to something like this then I'm gonna right click to duplicate it one more time I'm gonna move it right here and this time I'm gonna change the color to let's say green and let's make it 4 and then again I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this one move it to somewhere like this let's say and then I'm gonna change the color to something like this and now you can simply go ahead and organize the different walls as you like Let's say I move it here, I move it a little bit on this side like this. So now we have all these balls ready in the scene. And since we have duplicated it from the first ball, so all the properties of the ball like the script, like the rigid body and the bouncy material all have been duplicated to all these different balls. So now if I go ahead and click on play, you will see that all the balls simply go ahead and jump together in the game and now we can simply go ahead and click any of these balls to destroy them and you can see already it's a little bit challenging not that easy as it seems so as you can see here this is how we have destroyed all these balls and what we want is whenever all these balls destroyed we want to print you win message on the screen now another thing you can do is as you can see the balls are falling straight so what we want to do is we want to make the behavior a little more interesting to do that, I'm going to simply select this boundary, which is uh, which is right here. Then I'm going to go ahead and duplicate it, then move it like this. Then I'm going to select the rotation tool and rotate it like this. All right. Then I'm going to select the move tool again, and I'm going to move it to a position like this. So now the balls will fall on this and they will not bounce straight but they will bounce like this and this and this. So this will give a more random behavior to our game. Now I'm going to duplicate it one more time and this time I'm going to simply change its exposition to not look at not the scale exposition to 3.69 instead of minus 3.69 and into change the Z rotation from minus 1 to 3 to from 1 to 3 to minus 1 to 3 all right so we need to ch simply change the X position from minus to plus and we need to make the Z rotation from plus to minus so now both of them are on the opposite sides now you can simply go ahead and move them by hand and place it anywhere you want there's no problem in that but I simply want to keep them same so now you will see if I click on play the balls will fall down and they will bounce crazy like randomly. So this is not the same behavior that we had previously. Alright, so this is what we wanted. Now what I can do is I can simply go ahead and select both of these boundaries by clicking shift. So click the first one, select shift and click the second one. And then we're going to select the color. And then we can change the alpha value and make it zero. 
So that means now we cannot see them on the screen, but they are still present in the screen. Okay. So as you can see, if I click on play, the balls fall down and we cannot see the boundaries, but they are working under the hood. So now we have all the balls bouncing and you can also destroy these balls. So now we need to figure out a way to make our player win the game. Now to handle all this win and all these things, we're going to create a separate object named Game Manager that's going to manage our whole game. So I'm going to click on create, create empty and I'm going to rename it to Game Manager. Then I'm going to go to the scripts folder, right click, create a new C sharp script and I'm going to name it Game Manager. And as you can see, it changes its icon, but don't worry, this does whenever you name any script to Game Manager. Now we can select the Game Manager object, drag and drop the Game Manager script on it, and then double click to open it in Visual Studio. So here we have our Game Manager script. So first of all, here we're going to create a new variable named score. So I'm going to create float, not float, we need int, so int score equals zero so this is an integer variable and the initial value of the score is gonna be zero now i don't need the start function so let's go ahead and delete it now here we're going to create another new function so we're going to write public void score up oops not start score up so this is a function that will help our game to score up so whenever we will destroy the ball, this will help our score to go up. So inside this function, we're going to simply write score plus plus. That means the value of score will be incremented. So if it is zero, it's going to be one. If it is one, it's going to be two. So every time the score of function is called, the value of score will be incremented. All right. Now we also need to check when the win condition happens that means whenever we win our game so to handle the win situations here we're going to create another new function called void win so inside this win function we need to do and handle all the things related to winning the game all right so now we need to figure out a way to call this score up function from our ball functions so that whenever we destroy the ball we call this score up function and increment the value of score so for that i'm gonna open the ball script here again as you can see here i have the game manager script and here i have this ball script so now inside this ball script before destroying the ball object inside this on mouse run function what we want to do is we want to get access to the game manager in order to access the game manager, we need to write game object dot find and inside it we need to write game manager. So now it will find an object which is named game manager from our Unity scene. All right. So now when it finds, we need to access the game manager script from it. So we need to write dot get component and write exactly I have written because otherwise it will not work game manager and then we need to call the score up function so write dot score up so this is the whole code that we need to do so let me go through it one more time so when we are writing game object dot find game manager what it is doing is it is simply finding this game manager object that we have in our scene all right then we are simply getting the game manager script from this object as you can see here we have this game manager script attached so it is getting access to this game manager script after that it is calling the score up function from our game manager script that is this one all right so every time on mouse down function gets called First of all, the game manager's score up function will get called and our score will be incremented and then the ball object will be destroyed. All right. So now in the game manager, we can increment the value of score. So now we need to check when the score goes 
above a certain value. So in this case, we have four balls. So when we will destroy the four balls, our score will be four. And when the score gets four, we want to make the player win. All right. So here we're going to check if score is greater than equals four, then we're going to call this win function. All right. So whenever the score gets uh, greater than four, we're going to call this win function and the win function will handle all the related things that we need to handle related to score, like displaying the score or restarting the game and anything that we want. So first of all, here we're going to create a new game object or a new game object, which will be our score text or our win text. So here you're going to write public game object win text. So this will be the winning text you win that will be displayed whenever we win the game. So initially we will keep this text disabled and whenever we win the game, we will enable it so that we can see it on the screen. So inside the win function, we're going to write win text dot set active true. So that means we are activating the win text objects win text object whenever the win function gets called. So now we need to go back to Unity and create this win text. So here we are back inside Unity and here we need to create the winning text. So I'm going to click create UI and from here you can either click on text or click on text text mess pro text. So I'm going to click on this text mess pro text and you can click on import TMP essentials. Probably in the newer versions when you see this video, this will come by default, but right now you have to import it like this. So now we have imported the things, we have everything set up. And as you can see here, we have a text on the screen. We can simply double click to see the text. Now we can, we need to select the canvas and set it to a resolution so that it automatically scales to any other resolution. Otherwise, as you can see, when we make the screen smaller, the text becomes like this. So we need to make the text something so that it becomes small and big along with the screen so that we can run our game in all different screens. All right. For that, we need to select the canvas. For the render mode, we're going to keep it at screen space overlay. So now we need to add the canvas scalar component to it. Now in your case, if you have the canvas scalar attached here already, then you don't need to do anything. But here, as you can see, the canvas scalar component is not attached. So I'm going to go to add component and search here canvas scalar and simply click on it. And as you can see, the canvas scalar component is attached. So now for the UI scale mode, we need to select the scale with screen size. And for the reference resolution, let's give it 1280 by 720. So now our UI will be designed for this resolution. And then for the match value, we're going to give 0 0.5. That means it will match with width and height equally. So now as you can see here, we have our text. We can select the text and let's rename it to win text. Then we're going to change the text value to you win. Let's make it capital you win. Now we're going to change the font size to let's say 50. And then we can simply go ahead and change the size of the text by selecting this rect tool like this. We can select the rect tool and change the size this way like this and then we can simply drag it and as you can see the handles will automatically position it in the center whenever I keep it like this. Now you need to go to this alignment option and select the center for both vertical as well as horizontal. So now our text will be at the exact center of our screen. Then I'm gonna change the font size to let's say 100 something like this and we can also make it bold and now it looks pretty good. All right. 
If you want, you can simply go ahead and change the color as well, like red or yellow or green anything. I think I'm gonna leave it to white because that's looking pretty good in this case. So this is the win text. Now we're gonna select this game manager. And as you can see, it is expecting this win text from us. So we can drag and drop this win text in this win text slot. Now we're gonna select this win text and disable it by default. So at the starting of our game, we're gonna disable this win text and whenever the game is won, this win text will be activated automatically by our game manager because that is what we have written in our code. So now let's go ahead and test and see if it is working or not. So let me click on play. And as you'll see all the balls will fall down and bounce. So let me click on the balls. It's pretty hard and as you can see you win text is shown whenever we won the game and destroy all the balls. So that means our code and everything else is pretty much working. So now we have this working game where the ball falls. We can destroy the balls and win text is already shown. Now one more thing that we're going to do that is the last thing is we're going to create a reset button that will be shown whenever we win the game. So when we win the game the reset button will be shown and we can reset the game and play it one more time. To do that I'm going to click on create UI and click on button and as you can see here we have a button. We're going to go ahead and go to the rubric transform of the button, click on this gear icon and click reset to reset its position. Then we can change its size a little bit and then you can drag it down like this. I think I'm going to drag it down a little more to the bottom of the game screen. Then we can select the text property and change the text property to restart. Then we can change the font size to let's say 50 and now it looks pretty good. We can also change the button uh, or the text. Let's change the text color to something like yellowish or a little bit darker than that. I think this looks pretty good and goes with the game. So I think I'm gonna keep it like this. So this is our restart button. So now we need to add some functionality to the restart button so that whenever we click on this button, the game gets restarted. Alright? So to do that, first of all, I'm gonna click on our button. And here we need to add an on click event. Alright? But before that, we need to add our code to our game manager so that we can operate our button. So let's open our game manager. In this case, whenever we click the button, we want to reload the scene and play the game again. So in order to use those functionalities, we need to use another namespace in Unity. So here we need to write using uh, Unity Engine dot scene management. All right. So now whenever we win the game and then we show the win text, Along with that, we're going to create a new function here. So we're going to write public void re restart. So this function will handle the restarting of our game. Now make sure to make it a public variable or I'm, I'm sorry, a public function. Otherwise, we will not be able to access this from our button. Okay. So inside here, we're going to write scene manager dot load scene. And for the name of a scene, name of a scene, you need to simply write the name that you have given to our scene. In this case, I have given the name game to our scene. So I'm going to simply write game. And you need to write it exactly as you have written. All right. So now whenever the restart function gets called, our game will be restarted. So let's go back to Unity. And let's select the button. Now let's go ahead and click on this on click event to add an on click event to our button and now as you can see it is expecting an object here we need to simply drag and drop our game manager because that is where we have our functionality or the script now from this no function button we're going to go to this game manager and from here we're going to select this restart now make sure to create the restart a public function if you don't make it public you will not be able to select it from here 
So now we can click on this restart and as you can see here we have this restart function attached to this button. So now whenever we will click this button the game will be restarted. So let's click on play and check if it is working or not. So we have clicked on play, let's click on restart and as you can see game gets restarted every time I play the game. So now we don't want to show this button every time, alright? We want to show it only when the game gets over or we win the game, alright? So we want to show it only when we win the game. So we need to do exactly same as we have done with our win text. We need to disable it by default and whenever we win the, win the game, we need to show it on our screen. So let's go back to our scripts and below this win text, we need to create a public game object, not game manager, game object and we're going to name it restart button and whenever we win the game, we're going to say restart button dot set active to true. So this is exactly same as the win text. So whenever we win the game, we simply activate this button and before that we will not show this button in our game. Now we need to go back to the Unity editor, select the game manager and in the restart button slot, simply drag and drop this button right here. Alright, so now whenever we win the game, the restart button will be shown. So let me click on play and the balls are bouncing. I can simply go ahead and click on them. Few more clicks and as you can see you win and the restart button is also shown and whenever I click on restart, the game gets restarted again. So we have finished building the game. So now all we need to do is we need to build it and run it on our mobile device so that we can show it to the world and give it to our friends to play. So let's do that now. So now we need to do few more things before we can build it and run it on our Android device. So we need to go to File, Build Settings and click on Add Open Scenes and make sure our game scene or the scene which you are building is added to the build settings. If it is not added to the build settings then our restart function will not work and our game will not build as well. Then we need to click on this player settings and here we need to make few changes. As you can see here we have this default company. You can change it to name of your company. I'm going to name it Charger Games. Then I'm going to change the name of the product. I think I'm going to name it Ball Bounce Shoot. And for the icon, you can give it any icon. I think I want to give this ball blue icon. And for the default cursor, I'm not going to change it. Then you need to come to this resolution and presentation tab because this is very, very important. So here, as you can see, auto rotation is enabled by default, but we are building our game in portrait mode. So we don't want our screen to rotate. That's why we're going to select this portrait from here. Then we're going to go to this other settings and as you can see here we have something called package name and you have to change the package name and make it something unique. Every game in the world should have a different and unique package name. Now the easiest way or the most followed method to do this is to write the name of your company's website in backwards. As an example my website is chargergames.com. So I'm going to write com.chargergames and then dot and then we're going to write the name of the game. So here I'm going to write com.chargergames.ballbounce. Okay. And then you can give it a version name. And when you create an updated version of this game, you can change the name of this version. All right. And then here automatic has installed is selected. So you don't need to make any changes there. And now we have all these things ready to publish our game. So you can go ahead and click on build and build it and then you can run it on your device. But another thing you have to do is now Google has made it mandatory to make a 64 bit build for your game as well. So you cannot simply update, you cannot simply upload this 32 bit only version on Google Play anymore. So as you can see currently this ARM 64 is disabled by default. And in order to enable it, you need to go to this scripting backend 
and from mono change it to IL2 CPP. And when you change it, now as you can see that ARM V64 is activated. Now you can simply go ahead and select this one. And now as you can see, our game will target this ARM64. Alright? So now you can simply select this ARM64 and now everything should be okay. Alright, so before we finally build it, make sure you have installed the Android SDK and the NDK tools, otherwise it's not gonna work. So you can go to Edit and Preferences and External Tools and make sure you have this Android SDK tools installed with Unity, Android NDK tools installed with Unity and JDK installed with Unity. So make sure you have all these things installed or you can go ahead and add component from the Unity Hub and install it as I have shown in the uh, first section of this video. Alright, so now that we have all these things set up, we can simply go ahead and click on build. And as you can see here, I have created a new folder named build. And inside the folder, I'm gonna name our project ball bounce shoot. And then I'm gonna click on save. And now you're gonna then you're gonna see that Unity will convert it to an APK. And as you can see, it says update or use highest installed. So I'm gonna click on use highest installed. So now as you can see, Unity has finally finished building the APK for us. So here we have this ball bounce shoot app. You can simply go ahead and copy it and move it to your Android device or email it to your device or do anything and transfer it to your device and install it manually. Now another way we can do is we can simply go ahead and click on build and run and before doing that you need to make sure that you have connected your mobile device to your computer via USB and then you can build it right here and install it on your mobile device directly. So now I have connected my mobile device to my computer using the USB cable and I have also turned on the USB debugging mode on my mobile. So make sure you have enabled the USB debugging as you can see here and you need to do that from the developer options. So you need to also turn on the developer options. Also you need to turn on the install via USB and also you need to check that you can install from unknown sources. So once you have done that, your mobile will be ready to build and run your game. So now you can simply go ahead and click on build and run and let's rename it to ball bounce shoot 2 and click on save. And now you will see that it will build and use the highest installed. It will build and here we have our mobile device. You will see that as it keeps building, it will come to our mobile device and we will be able to install it on our mobile device right here. As you can see currently it says copying APK package to device and also here I have got an install option. I'm going to click on install and now the app will be installed on my mobile device and it will start playing. So now as you can see the game is going to start playing on my mobile device and here as well I can simply touch on my mobile device and destroy the balls as you can see that's what I'm doing. I'm trying actually. So let me go ahead and destroy all the balls. And as you can see, as I have clicked and it says you win, I can click on restart and start the game again. So this is how I can simply go ahead and run it on my mobile device. And this way you can run it on a mobile device or give it to your friends and tell them to run it on a mobile device. So this is how we have successfully learned how to build a complete Android game from start to finish and install it on your mobile device and run it as well. So I hope you really really enjoyed how to build this complete game from start to finish with me. So if you want to learn more and build some more cool games, you can go ahead and check out my complete Android game development courses and other courses where you're gonna learn to build a lot more games like 3D zigzag game, fruit ninja game, tappy ball game, endless Santa runner game and 2D ball dodging game and a lot of different games. So you can go ahead and check the links for these courses from the description of this video and you can get them at the cheapest prices. So you can take the courses, learn a lot more like this and build your own Android games. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you really enjoyed and learned a lot. So 
make sure to subscribe to the channel and like this video if you have really liked it and i'm gonna see you in the next video Hey everyone, this is Raja from Charger Games and welcome back to another video. Now I have made a lot of videos about building Android games but in this video I'm gonna show you how to make a simple Android game in just 15 minutes. So I hope you are excited and let's get started. Alright, so let's start building the game. I'm gonna click on new on Unity Hub to create a new project. I'm gonna click on 2D and I'm gonna simply name it let's say Food Eater tutorial and then click on create to create a new project and now unity will create a new project for us okay so here i have created a new unity 2d project and our project has been opened i'm gonna go to file build settings and click on android and then click on switch platform so now as you can see after some time our project has been transferred to android and now we're gonna start building the game so first of all from the resolution we're gonna go ahead and select this 1920 by 1080 portrait for our game then i'm gonna go to main camera go to the background click on solid color make sure solid color is selected then go to the background color and select a dark gray like color something like this something close to this one all right then we're gonna go to our assets right click create to this right square and then i'm gonna go ahead and right click create a sprite circle so now i'm gonna drag and drop the square here and i'm gonna go ahead and rename it to player then i'm gonna select the rect selection tool and go ahead and make the size much much smaller than how it is i think something like this should be okay a little bit longer on this side something like this then i'm gonna go ahead and change the color so select the player go to the sprite renderer color and i'm gonna change it to a color something like this all right now i'm gonna go ahead and select our circle and drag and drop it here i'm gonna make the size i'm gonna press shift and drag it to make the size much much smaller something like this all right then I'm going to go to the color and change the color to a sky like color, something like this. Then I'm going to go here and rename it to, let's say, food. Then I'm going to go to the tag, click on add tag, click on plus to create a new tag and name it food. Then I'm going to select the food and click on this and select the food tag. So now we have the food ready. So for the food, we're going to select it. We're going to go to add component, go to physics 2D and click on circle collider 2d to add a collider to it all right so now we have our food ready we're gonna go ahead and duplicate and spawn it all over the scene so duplicate right click and duplicate to spawn it duplicate then click on this and move it somewhere else anywhere you want to put it somewhere like this then again duplicate and put it somewhere like this then again press ctrl d to duplicate and position it somewhere on the bottom somewhere like this select this one position it somewhere like this and then again press ctrl d and position it somewhere let's say like this i don't have much time to design it correctly but you can take your time so here we have all our foods so now i'm going to go ahead and duplicate the last food and this time i'm going to rename it to danger then I'm going to go to the color and select a dark black color for it. So it is our danger and I'm going to go ahead and select on the danger and go to the tag, click on add tag, click on plus to create a new tag and I'm going to tag it to danger. Then I'm going to select the danger and select the danger tag from here. So now we have our danger obstacle ready. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate again to position it somewhere else on our level then i'm gonna go ahead and right click and duplicate it again to position it somewhere else on our level something like this so now we have three danger elements if you want you can add a few more of this you can duplicate it and position it let's say somewhere like this so now we have the danger elements and the foods ready so now it's time to create our player and add scripts to that so I'm going to select our player, go to add component, 
physics 2d and i'm going to add a rigid body 2d to it so rigid body 2d i'm going to go ahead and make the gravity scale zero and the angular drag zero as well then i'm going to add component physics 2d and add a box collider 2d to it so let's go ahead and select the box collider 2d here it is and now we have a box collider to the player now i'm going to go ahead and create add com i'm going to create a new script so right click create a new c sharp script and i'm going to name this one player player then i'm going to select our player so drag and drop the script on our player here we go then double click to open it in visual studio so here our script has been opened in visual studio first of all here i'm going to create a new rigid body 2d variable rigid body 2d rb then i'm going to create the void awake function and inside that i'm going to say rb equals get component rigid body 2d all right so now we have the rigid body 2d now inside the fixed update function so we're going to create void fixed update and inside the fixed update function we're going to say rb dot velocity equals uh, transform dot up multiplied by move speed and we have not created the move speed variable yet but we're going to write it here and now we're going to create a public float move speed variable like this and then we're going to create another variable public float rotate amount and another one um, another one we're going to create float rot so this will be the rotate value all right okay so now inside the update we need to check whether we are clicking on the left or right on the screen and depending on that we need to rotate our player so first of all we're going to check if input dot get mouse button zero that means we are whether we are pressing on our screen or not and if we are pressing then we need to get the uh, position so we're going to save that uh, here so we're going to say um, vector 3 mouse pose equals input camera dot main dot screen to world point input dot mouse position all right so now that we have got that we need to check if mouse pose is less than zero then we're going to move to the left or rotate to the left else we need to rotate to the right all right so we need to say if mouse pose dot x is less than zero then we're going to rotate to the left else we're going to rotate to the right so if mouse pose dot x is less than zero then we're going to say rot equals to rotate amount else we're going to say rot equals minus rotate amount rotate amount all right so now at last we're gonna say transform dot rotate zero in the x zero in the y and in the z we're gonna say root so this is the amount by which we're gonna rotate our player all right so this code is ready so let's check how it's working so let's go ahead and go back to unity so here we are back inside unity we're gonna give our rotation speed to let's say five and we're gonna move our move our speed to two and click on play and here is our player we're gonna click here it's gonna rotate on this direction we're gonna click here it's gonna rotate on that direction so uh let me first of all let me try to play it once again so here's our player and i'm gonna click on this it's gonna rotate on this direction i'm gonna rotate click here it's gonna rotate on that direction so our player is moving and it's rotating as well so this is ready this code is ready so our player is moving now we need to destroy this object so let's go back to our scripts and here we're gonna detect collisions so we're gonna say void on collision enter 2d if collision dot game object dot tag equals food so if we are colliding with foods then we're gonna destroy the food destroy collision dot game object that means we are destroying the food and then if else if collision dot game object dot tag equals danger then we're gonna simply going to restart the level so we're gonna say scene manager scene manager dot load scene game so we're gonna reload the game scene and as you can see this has not been imported i can simply press alt enter to re-import it 
so now our scene management has been imported like this all right so when this happens we're going to simply destroy it and then when the uh, when we collide with the danger we're going to restart the level so here what you're going to do we're going to create another variable in score and then here we're going to uh, when this happens we're going to simply go ahead and make score plus plus and then we're going to check if score is greater than equal to 5 then we're going to print level complete complete all right so this code is almost ready so let's go back to unity to check how it's working so now i can click on play and you will see it's going i can click here to collect this and then i can rotate and come here and as you can see if i collide with these objects let's collide with these objects uh, we're going to restart our level but currently it's not restarting because we have not added those things so we're going to go to scene we're going to rename our scene to game and reload and now if i click on play let's see how it's working so now i'm going to go ahead and collide with these objects and as you can see game restarts every time i collide with these objects and every time i collide with these objects as you can see they get collided and our score will get incremented and when i actually collect all the objects our uh, console will print you win or level cleared in this case but currently we have only four objects here so level cleared will not be printed in this case so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and select any of our foods and right click to duplicate it and position it somewhere like here so now it should print level clear whenever we uh, get all these objects so now what i can do is i can go ahead and create a new ui text element to show off here so i'm going to name this one win text and here i'm going to write level cleared and then i'm going to go to the text by double clicking it then i'm going to go to here and click on reset to reset its position then i'm going to double click to open it here then i'm going to change its color to white then i'm going to go ahead and click the red selection tool and make it much much bigger then i'm going to change its font size to bigger something like this then i'm going to center it like this then i'm going to make it something like this all right then we can simply say level cleared something like this that should show up whenever we finish the level okay so it should show up whenever we finish the level now we can go to our canvas and change it to screen space camera and we can drag our main camera right here all right so here we have our level select text we can double click to position it anywhere that we want all right so things are doing fine here we can also go to our canvas and go to scale with screen size and write 1920 by 1080 here so this is already looking good we can go ahead and change the font size a little more let's say bump it up like this so here we have bumped up our font size and made it somewhere like this something like this okay so this is ready now we need to disable it by default then we need to uh, go to our script and here we need to create a new public variable public game object win text all right and when the score is greater than five we're going to say win text dot set active true so it should show the win text there so let's go back here and now whenever we collect all the objects our win text should show up here so last thing we're going to do is we're going to select our player and add a go add a trail renderer to the player so that it looks good so we're going to go to add component effects and we're going to click on this uh, trail renderer right here so here we have a trail for the player we're going to change the time from 5 to uh, 0 0.5 we're gonna set the width to from 0 0.5 to we're gonna click here and position it somewhere like this then we're gonna go to the color and we're gonna select this one and change the alpha to zero 
change the ending alpha to zero then we're gonna go to the materials and select the default sprites default material from here so now we can select the player and move it to see how it's looking and as you can see this is how it's looking if you want you can make the uh, size a little bit smaller something like this all right so something like this should work i think this is working right now so now what we can do is we can simply go ahead and click on play to see if everything is working so now our player is moving we can rotate our player by clicking here and it's it can collect the objects as you can see so what we have done is we have we need to actually select our player and here on the player script we need to actually drag and drop the win text object so we're going to go ahead and drag and drop the win text object so now our game is ready to be played and we have finished it so now we can go to file build settings player settings and go to here and name the company i am going to name it charger games i'm going to name it Purita tutorial as it is so let's leave it there now everything is ready now we can simply go ahead and click on build to build it i'm going to save it as foodeater.apk and click on save to save the project or save the apk file so now as you can see the apk is here and we have finished building the game so it's complete so here as you can see the finished game is running on my mobile device and as you can see i can control the player by clicking on left and right on my mobile device and i can collect the objects and after collecting all the objects it says level finished and here i have changed the winning score to three to demonstrate it to you and when i collide with the black ones the game gets restarted so we have created a fully working game in just 15 minutes so congratulations for that now show you to your friends and family and enjoy thank you so much for watching this video i hope you really enjoyed watching this so if you if you want to learn more and build some more cool games and projects you can check out my complete game development courses all the links are given in the description so from there you can get a huge discount on all my courses so thanks for watching make sure to subscribe to the channel and i'm gonna see you later hey thank you so much for watching this video start to finish i hope you really enjoyed learning with me throughout the whole video so if you want to learn more and build some more cool games you can check out all my courses from the links given in the description of this video if you want to learn about c sharp you want to learn about building android games runner games 3d endless runners 2d racing games zigzag car games all that i have covered in my courses so if you want to learn more about unity build some more complete projects start to finish you can check out all my courses from the links given in the description of this video so with that being said i hope you really enjoyed learning with me and thank you so much and I'm going to see you in another video very soon.